Hey guys, it's Clara. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing my first impressions of testing out the expanding soil from the Dollar Tree. Plus, I have a garden update. Stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, I do occasional gardening videos. And if you like all things Dollar Tree, like hauls, organizing, please check me out and subscribe below. Lately, Dollar Tree has been selling this natural and organic expanding soil alternative by Garden Innovations. The package says it can be used for flowers and veggies and can make up to three quarts once water is added. It is made of 100% coconut and natural wood fibers. To be honest, I do believe it is cheaper to buy soil in large bags. It's just a better value, but I only needed a little bit and I was super curious to see does this product really work? So I have these containers from the Dollar Tree in which I'm hoping to grow radishes. I'm not sure how large they are, but I'm guessing they'll likely need one and a half to two bricks to fill the pot. If you're curious to see how well the radishes grow, please comment below and I will do a video of the results. The instructions say to add one liter of water to the whole brick. To start, I just used a third of the brick and added about 300 to 400 milliliters and it certainly does expand. I tried the rest of the brick with about 600 to 700 more milliliters. I mixed the fibers around by hand to better distribute the moisture. You know, these kind of remind me of those magic towels from the Dollar Tree that start off really small and then expand into a face cloth with water. So, so far so good. Again, if you're interested to see how well the plants grow, just let me know and I'll do an update. So for now, let's head over to the garden. So first, let's take a look at Arya's garden. I still did not plant these marigolds. I put them in bigger pots, but yeah, I really need to decide where these are gonna go. I have a feeling that some of these little things that are popping through might be marigold seedlings, but I'm probably gonna end up pulling most of those just to keep the water dedicated towards the vegetables and the herbs. I went through all of the tomatoes in the garden, including arias, to take out the bottom branches. So any bottom branches that might be popping through, I take off. Those potentially could be places where there could be soil backsplash, where the plant might get some viruses or bacteria. We don't want that. So the tomatoes are looking okay. And I did a kind of a stake system instead of the cages this year, just to see how this might work. Two cages might be a little bit crowded. And we found last year that the cages did not go as deep into the ground as I hoped. So as you can see, we also mulched the area. Here's one of my Aldi um, statues that I just bought. And we have tomato Rapunzel. Here are some snap peas that hopefully also will be able to stake up here and then maybe up here. Some bush beans at the back there. They're looking okay. It's been kind of cold, so I'm hoping as the weather gets warmer that some of these plants will, will thrive better. Then over here is another bean plant and both of them are bush beans. And I decided to pick up some thyme because I think I accidentally pulled it out. <laughs> so here's one thyme plant, and this one's a little different than I'm used to. It's lemon thyme, and oh, just doing this, I can smell it. It smells so, so good. Rosemary is still doing okay, but just to be on the safe side so that I have rosemary, especially for the fall, especially Thanksgiving, I went ahead and planted a new one. And then we have the oregano. The chives are doing well, although gotta watch out for these guys. So if you don't want them to keep spreading around, you kind of have to take off these flowers. And you could cook these, you can eat these, but yeah, they spread really easily if you let them. Over here <laughs> under this wire garbage can is an extra zucchini plant. And really I'm growing these more, more so for the blossoms. 
I decided kind of a while ago not to grow zucchini just because it's so cheap around here. It's like 20 cents, 25 cents at the farmer's market. So, but blossoms, you don't always find, you know, available on sale. This is another, this is a sun sugar tomato plant starting to grow. I ended up pulling some of the tomatoes off that were getting really huge so that the plants could dedicate more energy to getting bigger, getting the root system, getting the main stem thicker. And as you can see, I put tomato cages in the rest of these plants as well. This one is probably my most healthy of the plants, but I think this tomato was started earlier than the others in the greenhouse. So I went ahead and cleared the bottom. These are the bell peppers. Like I mentioned last time, I chopped them so to develop a better root system and a stronger stem. And to look, see, the plant did not die. We have some new growth coming in. And what I'm hoping will happen is at this spot where I chopped it, that will have a forking. And then we might even, I might even chop the plant again to have more forking. So that way we have more potential areas for fruit or peppers. I wanted to put basil here and this one has been waiting to be planted. And then also some um, supertunia. I've been following this channel, this new, well, it's new to me, that they love, and they love the supertunia. So I'll show you also, I have another one on this side, some bubblegum supertunias, which apparently are super popular. I did not know that. I don't know as much about flowers as I do about vegetables, which <laughs> is not a lot either. So anyway, isn't that so pretty? And then I'm hoping that it won't be too much, that the marigolds that are coming through will still come. This one might have some trouble, but yeah. We'll see what happens. These marigolds are doing well and these geraniums are looking spectacular because I've been more on top of um, deadheading the flowers that are done. And then the orange or the coral geraniums are doing well too. The vincas are doing well. I ended up planting a bunch of vincas and impatiens in pots over there and I put my extra chives over there and there's a geranium hiding in that <laughs> bigger pot on the grass. These are my pea plants and I'm so impressed, knock on wood, that no bunnies have eaten this because I've seen the baby bunnies, I watched them last night playing in the grass over there. But yeah, so eventually I hope to snake these up, this cage. And this one in the middle is a bush bean. It's one of the bush bean plants. Sad to say, I, I put this pinwheel here before the cage was there and it kind of chopped up the leaves. I felt so bad, totally my fault, but just didn't want it to be eaten by, by animals. So, and there's no reason this wood is here. I just, <laughs> we had extra wood. Yeah, I should just probably toss it in the fire pit. More vincas and impatiens. And then I'm going to be planting these marantas today. I've been propagating some just as an experiment. And look at these roots. Yowza, yowza mama. <laughs> yeah, this thing is ready. I think I'm gonna actually combine these into a pot. And this is an indoor house plant, or I plan it to be. Uh, I'll put that in here and then here. Look how pretty, how pretty these pansies are. They look like faces, don't they? Like women kind of scowling at your, at you <laughs> or just peeking at you like they can't see. They're squinting. Some extra time. Oh, this, oh, I love the way this smells. It just wakes me up. It's that lemon and thyme together. So I kind of want to put these into a pot and then take it inside in the fall. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had much luck with that in the past, especially with basil, you know, it attracts aphids and mites and stuff. But now that I'm using hydrogen peroxide, maybe I'll have better luck. I don't know. Let's go look under the material. So I changed out the material from a more tool type of material, you know, like um, kind of similar to ballerina skirts, which lets in more light, lets in water a bit more easily. And I think these plants really like it. The arugula is doing great. I've been kind of 
snipping off leaves and munching them <laughs> out here. The watercress is growing kind of slowly. I will keep be keeping an eye on that. I don't know what the typical course is for the life of watercress. Zucchini's doing okay. They usually do just fine in these five gallon pots. Um, this is gonna get huge though. So what I'm going to do is when it gets big, I'm gonna cut the leaves back and then just eat the blossoms, like I mentioned before. And these kale, they're surviving so far. So far there's no um, cabbage looper moth. Thank goodness, hopefully that lasts. And then I have another zucchini over here. So hopefully I'll have plenty of zucchini blossoms to eat. And then we have blush peas from MI Gardener on the left and some snap peas. And I did end up planting five umpalaya seeds. They were from the market though. So I don't know how well they're going to do. I think typically you should wait till the fruit is overripe and dry those seeds out in order to plant it. You know, I think that's the way it works out best, but I'm giving it a shot, we'll see. And then these are sun sugar tomatoes. So you can see some tomatoes coming in here, which I'm tempted to cut off, you know, just so it can put more energy towards the plant, but I'll leave them for now. So I'll be taking these radish greens and then using them for scrambles in the morning and the next morning too. Oh yeah, so the mint, it's of course thriving where I'm not pulling it. <laughs> And I really need to clear out more of the space again. It's, you can see it's coming through. I'm tempted to make a mint chutney. My friend made that for me um, and it was incredible. So yeah, I need a recipe for mint chutney if you have one and I'll ask her for hers too. And then our mums are doing okay. They're just uh, getting a little bit bigger. I think they're still getting over the cold. And yeah, that is it for most of the plants. Let me know guys how your gardens are doing. I think that'll be it as far as plants that I buy. I think that's enough. I've been tempted in the past to plant way more. I've po posted videos. I've posted videos before about how I had this whole thing covered with five gallon containers. I had steps. I had like a big trellis thing that I built. Um, but yeah, I realized that was too much for me not only because is it a lot to water but it's just a lot of produce and after giving it away giving it away i still had so much left and the freezer was was full i couldn't fit any more in there so yeah i'm trying to learn to <laughs> plant within my means i guess that's a metaphor for life again i don't know why with these gardening videos i feel kind of i don't know i feel contemplative and yeah, it's pretty quiet around here. My husband has solar panels that he uh, charges a battery with. But yeah, this is my view. <laughs> we can't go on vacation a whole lot because of medical needs, but I love this view. Uh, my own little paradise out here. And um, yeah, so that is it for this garden update. Let me know, guys, how your gardens have been doing. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care.